picked up this nice little lampshade and base here in a shop. It was in a sale, £2.50, not bad, eh? It's even got the plug on it. Now what I'm going to do is convert that into a mosaic fish lampshade and base. I've even got the designs here now uh, printed out, ready to cut out. I've got that I'm going to use on the uh, lampshade. I've got these five fish here and I've also got these ones as well. You can put as many or as little uh, fish on there as you want. Now I've also got this one as well. There's four different background papers there on the small side because this lampshade and base is pretty small so you don't want the, the uh, mosaic to be too big. Now we're going to start with the base of the lamp and as you can see it's ball shaped. And what we need to do is cut up little bits of this backing paper, quite small, because it is a sphere like that. It's more difficult if you've got large pieces, you'll get lots of crinkly bits in it. So we're just going to cut some small pieces big enough to start sticking down. So just take randomly if you want or choose whichever. I'm just going to cut out one of these corners here, one of the quarters. And I'm just literally going to, I'm going to trim the white off here first, like that. And now I'm literally going to cut them into small pieces, like that. Cut them into strips first if you want to, and then just do some small angles. I'm just making some little shapes here that are going to stick onto the ball shaped lamp base. You don't want them too big as I said because they are going to wrinkle if you do. Now I've got some PVA glue here and I've also got a small brush and as you can see the small brush is quite stiff really. I don't want a soft one because I'll be doing lots of doof, 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 doofing. Uh, now Always look at your lamp or what you're working on. I've got a natural lip going all the way around here. That's where I want my mosaic to finish. I don't want it to go right up to the edge there. So, taking your brush, a little bit of glue, I'm just going to brush along there like that. You can use your brush to pick up the little pieces and you've got a flat bit at the end. So just press that down and you can see how that moulds itself around because it's a small piece to the uh, to the bowl there so just carry on going round overlapping and painting over the paper as you go just turn that around and use the brush with the glue on it just to hold it in position press it down gently and then all you do now is just follow that all the way around a little bit of glue pick up one of the pieces position it, trying to get a nice neat rim around the top there and then just rub the glue over the top and as I said just keep going around here adding piece by piece. So now you can see I've gone all the way around the top and done a nice neat finish all the way around. Now all you've got to do is turn it over and do the same to the bottom here. And now I'm just coming towards the end of joining these all up and one last one on there first. Just position it. And you see because they are nice small pieces there going around the ball shape really easily. Next thing to do is just go around here doing the same thing, just neatening off where the hole is for the flex to come out. Now that I've done the top and the bottom and around the hole there, I can just fill up the big space in between and it's just literally adding glue all over, picking up and just pasting down. So you've just got to do that all the way around. I 
and now you can see I'm just going up to the last final bit now just got one little gap to fill in oh it's really satisfying when you get to that bit oh I enjoy that it's better than the first cup of tea there you go so the whole ball globe whatever you want to call it of the lamp stand there has been totally covered as you can see now all you have to do now is just put that to one side and let that dry now we've got the shade to decorate now on the globe at the bottom that was opaque you did, you wasn't shining any light through it so you could just put the background on straight away this one we're gonna have light shining through so if I put mosaic all over the shade and then put the fish on the top it just looked too thick and then the mosaic would shine through the fish so what you have to do with this one is put the fish on first and then a little bit more intricate put the mosaic in between now to help you as well uh, I've cut these all out and I've put some little bits of white tack on the back here just to hold them in position so I can just see how many fish I need, where they want them. And one tip is, choose your favourite fish. Because 10 to 1, that's going to be the front. Now that's the back of it there, you can see where the seam is. That will probably never be at the front, you'll always want that towards the front. So put your nicest fish at the front here. So all you've got to do is then work your way around, adding your fish as you go, until you get the composition that you want. Then when you've got the composition, it's my idea that you should actually then just take a photograph of it. And I've just printed this out into four as it went all the way around. And I've got the what fish goes next to what here. So when I'm putting it back together, sticking it down, I can follow this. Now I've got the shade in the exact place where I want it. I've got the back of it there. I've got my picture here so I can follow what this goes here first. So first of all, I'm going to take a, a nice wide brush and give it a really good brush with the PVA glue. And this is, you need to just stick the fish on first and then we're going to follow that when it's dried with all the little mosaic bits. So put generous amount on, but very, very thin. You don't want it wrinkling. And then just place your fish, fish on as gently as possible. And then from the middle, just gently push this out and it'll just gently wrap its way around the lampshade like that. If you've not got any glue on the bits it should be, you just lift it up and just put some extra glue there. And that can just go back. Doesn't matter if the glue's on or on the fish on the front, you want it on the front. And then a little bit more glue under there. And there's the first fish stuck down. All you have to do is just follow your pattern going round, sticking the fish down as you go. And now I'm just putting the last one on. Try to keep your glue as thinly spread as possible if you've got too much glue it will tend to wrinkle the paper on the fish of the fish the fish are made from got there in the end last one's going in there now all you've got to do now is let these dry put it to one side to let it dry and you can see now when I get the light inside the light will come through the fish and then we'll put the mosaic in between but let it dry first Now we're going to add the, uh, the mosaic. Now you can be precise and cut things out to fit exactly, but I can't be bothered with that. Uh, I'm a quick crafter. Um, I've got the sheets here, or you could use scraps and that. And what I'll have done here is cut those up into lots of little pieces. And it's just like you did on the base, just a little bit of, little bit of glue there. Pick up a piece and stick that down. Now try and line it up as best you can, doesn't matter if it overlaps because this could be trimmed with scissors later on. 
So try and fill out the most of it first, then you can always go back and fill in the little gaps in between. So that's that one there. I've got another one that'll probably fit there like so. Doesn't matter if they overlap. Just stick that down there. A little bit more fiddly than just sticking them randomly. As I say, don't forget about the top here. Just leave it. You can trim those with scissors later on. I might stick another one just in between there to join them two up like so. And just grab a little one there. And that can... The most important thing is, is that you don't cover the fish, obviously. And then just carry on filling in all the gaps with your little bits of mosaic. Now I've added all of the mosaic pieces all the way around and as you can see I've left all the jagged bits left in up. I'll show you how to get rid of those in a second. One good idea is, while that's drying, just pop it on top of the base there. Just slip it on there because you've got the jagged bits at the bottom it's not going to stick to anything and that'll dry neatly. When you've um, stuck them all down, have a quick check, see if you can see any gaps. Just paste the little extra bits in if you want to and a uh, good idea is to put the bulb on when you put the light bulb on it'll expose a lot of the cracks which I've already done and I think it looks fine if it has got some of the cracks it looks okay now to get rid of these little bits and pieces very simple and easy to do just take your scissors and just on an angle just cut and just turn it as you go around and you can just trim off all these excess bitsies which are sticking up. Bitsies, all these excess bits. So just do it basically like that. Now you can do the top and the bottom. I'll finish the top off in a minute, but if I turn around, you can see all the different, uh, different bits there sticking up. And again, you just go around the bottom and you just trim those off. Now as you can see I trimmed the base and the top of the lampshade which leaves me with a really nice finish there. Now all I've got to do is give that two, three, four, as many coats as you want a varnish and it'll look like beautiful ceramic. Now the shade, the mosaic fish shade, has totally dried, the glue's dried and it's stuck to there. And as you can see, it's got a nice sheen all the way around there. Now you can leave it at that if you want to, but I've got a nice uh, gloss varnish. I'm going to give it three or four coats of that. It should give it a really good ceramic look at the end. Now you use whichever varnish you want. I've gone for a water-based varnish and it says it's touch dry in 20 minutes. Recoat in one hour. It's a superior protection against knocks, scuffs and scratches. Scuffs, I thought you said scruffs at the first time I looked. And it's non-yellowing, now that's really important. And it's also fade resistant. Now as it's clear, I don't know what it's going to fade from, but maybe it might even protect the colours here. Anyway, that's the one I've chosen, but you can choose any you like. And I've got a nice soft brush here, and I'm not going to apply too much. All you've got to do is go over the top with your soft brush, go as gently as you can, and just give it one coat. Now I've given that shade its first coat of varnish and one tip is before you varnish the base use that to prop your lampshade on so between coats it's in a nice position and you can even while it's on there leave it on there and add your second, third, fourth, fifth, how many as you want and leave it on top of that then do the base afterwards. And when you finish the shade, you can go on then to give the base three, four, five, six coats, as many as you want. And I'm again, I'm just giving it a gentle coating each one, not too much varnish, just gently varnish the base of the lamp. 